Welcome back everyone, Sweet Battle Scars here, and I am back with another unboxing video. Today we're gonna look at the Dark Souls Knight of Astora Oscar by Gecko, released this month, January of 2018. First release of the year by Gecko, and I have the box here, it's a pretty nice looking box, very similar to the uh, box for uh, Sigmire. Uh, the uh, other figure released uh, in the Dark Souls series by Gecko. Uh, so this is the second one. I don't think that there are any other figures in the Dark Souls universe uh, by Gecko uh, so far, at least. So very nice looking box. There is the uh, a drawing, a very nice. Well, looks like a drawing, but it's uh, of course technically a photo of the awesome statue that's enclosed in this box. I get my camera a little closer here. Uh, Box isn't that large. Uh, the one for uh, Sigmire was a lot larger here. Uh, so here we have on the side a little bit about the sculptor, the painter, and you know the people involved in uh, the production of this figure. In the back we have a very awesome photo here with some uh, fire uh, and his sword and whatnot. And um, you'll notice this uh, seal which says uh, limited is or crystal lizard sorry crystal crystal lizard is included as a pre-order bonus okay so um those who pre-ordered the figure got a crystal lizard i don't know if uh, uh that little crystal lizard would be included in uh, any of these uh figures that you get from third parties i got this direct from gecko um uh anyway we'll find out uh what the crystal lizard looks like in a few minutes here and i guess a small synopsis on the character of uh, Oscar in the game so there you guys go that's the box very nice looking box not too big I'll give it give it a quick measurement for those of you that might be interested in that uh, it's about uh, 15 inches in height uh, couldn't show you in the camera but it's uh, 15 inches in height and uh, it's about uh, 10 inches wide and about six and a quarter inches uh, deep so let's go ahead and uh, get this guy out of the box. You guys can see my Bloodborne figure out there, but also by Gecko. Really awesome figures by this company. Uh, anytime there's anything related uh, to Dark Souls, Bloodborne, or any other franchise that I'm into, and Gecko produces a statue, I'm there. Um, they produce really high quality stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and break the seal on camera. As a collector, it hurts a bit, but you know I'm not here to uh, just let this guy sit in this box. We are gonna get him out and see what he looks like. Alright, so there you guys go. The seals are broken. I like to do that on camera. I know maybe uh, that might be a little redundant to some people, but I like doing it on camera for you guys. So you guys know that this is the first time I'm looking at the figure. You guys... You guys get my first impressions of the figure. It's a quick little review. So, uh, you know, we are uh, experiencing this figure together at the same time. So it's got a lot of tape. Another seal here the uh, by Gecko. A lot of tape to cut around. And I think that is it. Okay, I think that's it. Sorry about the loud noise that this is gonna produce but it is necessary. Okay, <laughs> there you go. And that is the figure and it's a plastic en enclosure. Now you guys can see that this is just plastic, a plastic, plastic casing for it. If you guys, uh, I'll put a link of my unboxing of uh, Sigmire. Uh, of Katarina in the description below but if you guys look at that unboxing video he came wrapped up in foam and very neatly packaged and that is because he was actually resin uh, polystone resin where in uh, Oscar here is uh, PVC plastic which I actually but when it comes to Gecko I really l prefer their um, PVC figures uh, the Bloodborne Hunter for example and the doll are just perfect examples of their quality when it comes to PVC. I uh, I dare to say that in the, in, the, in the industry, very few companies, if in, I, I don't know if any other company that does what Gecko does with uh, PVC plastic, they are just the masters when it comes to this, to this material. 
So before I get everything else out, I'm gonna move my camera here. I'm sorry about the shaking. I wanna show you guys um, how I put it on the base. It's very straightforward, very simple, two pegs per foot. Uh, one of the pegs uh, is, no, it's not. They're all the same uh, diameter. So usually sometimes one of the pegs would be a little thicker in diameter than the, the other one, but these look, uh, these appear to be exactly the same uh, diameter. So we're gonna set Oscar on his base here. And it's very simple, very easy. Snaps right on. Very, very cool, very good looking already. Very awesome looking. Um, let's get this plastic out of his uh, armor. And uh, I like that they put lots of uh, plastic in their figures so that uh, nothing gets scratched like this here, that little chain. And you guys can see that this little chain moves. Wow, I love that detail. Um, okay, so we're gonna get this plastic out of the way and uh, get his uh, other components uh, in place. Here we have the shield and before I uh, put the shield in his hand, I guess I can show him to you uh, when I get a full view of this guy. Very, very nice details. Um, because of my lighting, because I want to make sure that you guys get every detail here. The lighting is a little too harsh for this. Uh, the paint appears really blue here on camera, but it actually is a very dark like navy blue with uh, lots of shading and um, textures on it. So it's, uh, the light kind of doesn't do it justice here. Uh, let me see if I can maybe adjust it a bit, turn it down a bit. You guys can see there, yeah, that's better. It got a little darker. That's a much uh, closer representation of the paint. In the back we have his hand here, and you guys can see that these guys spare no detail, even in the hand that is just holding the shield, every piece of detail is there. You guys can see the awesome detail on the armor. Uh, I think the light might be, okay, there we go. Got my light a little closer. You guys can see all the metallic paint there. Very, very cool. Okay, so this arm should go here. There we go. So it snaps right on. Well, it doesn't really snap, but it kind of just uh, goes in there. And uh, the peg is, these are just mechanical joints, but because of the plastic, there's very nice friction there. So, and it's really lightweight. That's, this is PVC plastic, it's not heavy, so it's not really going anywhere. If you set it in there correctly, that thing is solid, it's never going to move. So you guys can see there that I got it all the way in there. I don't want to do it, I don't want to grab the shield and push up because the shield is kind of fragile. Uh, so, got to make sure you push this actual hand in there. There we go. I think that did it. And for the final detail, we have his sword here, which is also very nice. You guys can see the, uh, got my lighting a little better here. You guys can see the detail there of the sword, the gold handle, and then the metallic paint here with some, uh, it's a little battle worn, some, some scars there from his battles, his many battles. And, uh, this does have a way that it's supposed to go in. If you guys notice the, uh, the joint for this, it has a flat area. It's a circular but it does have a flat edge to it. So it goes in like so. Make sure you line up the two flat edges and it should go in very nicely like so. And uh, before we move on, the very last component that we have here is actually the crystal lizard. Again, I apologize about the noise. Here we go. Got him out. Let's fix the camera a bit just for the lizard. And you guys can see there that the, according to that little sticker, I actually didn't uh, read too much about this when I pre-ordered this figure. I knew that it was going to come with a crystal lizard from the game, but I did not know it was going to be a pre-order bonus. So according to that little sticker, that little seal that I, I broke, it was a pre-order bonus. So, uh... This is what you got, which I, I think is perfect. Really, really awesome looking little lizard. Uh, let's talk about this guy first. Very nice pearlescent paint uh, on the actual cr crystal on its back there. 
Of course, uh, the rest of its body is like kind of this uh, rocky t texture. This all these like uh, stone scales. Um, even the bottom has been nicely textured and painted. Uh, little feet are all in there. Uh, very nice looking uh, little figure. Not too complicated, but I think it should go well with uh, Oscar or any other Dark Souls uh, figure uh, by other companies. Maybe even like uh, the, the statues by uh, First Four Figures or uh, the uh, Sigma or Katarina by Gecko. So very nice, very lightweight. It looks uh, like this is also PVC plastic. It's uh, it's solid, but it's very lightweight. It's not heavy at all. So we're going to set him apart there. Um, and now let's talk about the main event, Oscar here. So he is uh, kind of tall. I can't fit him in a single frame. He is about, the actual figure is about, uh, I'm going to say 12 and 3 quarters. Uh, 12 and 3 quarters inches. 12 uh, inches and 3 quarters. That's, uh, I guess is the right way to say it. Um, his base is uh, from what I can gather from the ruler is maybe about six inches in diameter. And uh, let's see, the longest two points in his width are, I guess, the tip of his sword to the uh, other side of his shield. It's about, it's kind of large actually. It's about maybe 10 and a half or 11 inches. Uh, so, you know, he's a, he's a nice, uh, he's got a nice size to him, not too big, not too small. So, uh, and of course he's uh, to scale with uh, Sigmire. Um, and uh, there we go. So now let's get a few close-ups of him. And again, uh, as I said before, I'm actually really happy that uh, Gecko decided to go with PVC for Oscar. I really love the details that they put into him. You guys can see that they spare no detail, these belts. I would hate for these to break off. If these were resin, these would snap right off. But because it's PVC plastic, these are kind of flexible. I don't want to flex it too much because then the paint will start cracking. So you got to leave them alone. Just know that if you accidentally flick them or anything like that, they're not going anywhere. But of course, avoid uh, moving it too much because then the elasticity of the paint can only give so much before it cracks. Um, you guys can see there. All his little uh, belts, little pouch here on the side. Every detail is in there. Every little stitch has been shaded. Every uh, like little corner of his pouch, the uh, the edges have been kind of weathered a little bit to show some uh, uh, wear and tear. Very nice looking uh, pouches. Even the paint on his uh, clothing here above his armor is a very nicely textured. The sculpt. Uh, this is actually not paint. This is part of the sculpt. It's got a nice texture to it. So then they went ahead and painted over it. And the paint has been applied very thinly, very methodical application of the paint to ensure that they don't, uh, you know, hide any of these textures to make sure that they don't uh, get rid of those textures. Because if you apply paint too thick on a figure like this, you are sure to get rid of some of these very nice textures. So the paint has been applied perfectly. So we still get all these stitches, all these like cross hatching here on his clothing. Very nice. Uh, the same can be said about the texture on his uh, scarf there. I guess you can call it a scarf. You guys can see all that very fine stitching has remained even after the paint was applied. So that means that the paint was just applied. It was applied just right. Um, the metallic paint also is just perfect. You guys can see that it really gives you the illusion that you're actually touching metal. Very, very nice. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't actually feel cold like metal, but just from looking at it, it, it definitely looks like metal. So they've used some very fine paints with fine pigment. Some metallic paints tend to look grainy if you don't, uh, you know, apply it properly or if you just buy, uh, you know, metallic paints that aren't high quality but these guys really uh went above and beyond when it comes to the paint it's a very fine grain on the paint so no grain on it very smooth metallic finishes uh same on his helmet you guys can see there that it's been nicely rendered so let's zoom out a bit and uh, admire some of the other elements of of him you guys have seen the shield very nice uh gold color on the uh, details there on his insignia and everything else uh very nice edges too on the metallic paint i don't know if my camera will focus you guys can see there every little detail 
has been pronounced by the paint. Uh, you know, they did a very good job with the sculpt and then they just enhanced everything and complemented it with the fantastic paint job. Um, especially on his chainmail armor, uh, you guys can see that the texture is intact, uh, the paint was applied just right and uh, they did a really nice job of uh, shading it. You guys can really see it there. I'm gonna maybe increase my lighting there a bit so you guys can see it. I think that uh, that there is a good shot. You guys can see the texture there. And, um, you know, I give, try to give you guys all these close-ups so you guys can really admire the figure uh, there through your monitor. I know sometimes the cameras really don't do it justice, but uh, with figures like this, I want to make sure I capture every detail. Uh, look at this. His boots, the leather, nicely worn. Uh, very nice effects with the paint. They've really achieved lots of interesting textures and colors with this. Uh, the colors are, you know, uh, give the figure a nice contrast between the armor and the clothing and the leather, but it, it still has a harmony. They've uh, applied the colors subtle, subtly enough that you still have harmony throughout the figure. And, uh, you know, all the co colors complement each other from the gold to the brown to the blue. Very nice looking. Um, met nice metallic finish there on his knee pads and his uh, leg armor. And can't get enough of that leather. That leather just looks super awesome, super fantastic. Very nice job on the paint. Um, so there you guys go. Uh, the, the base, just a uh, standard, uh, I guess, uh, floor that you would find in a castle. Uh, in medieval times, so nothing to go crazy about. Still a nice enough base, I think. Uh, and uh, there you guys go. That's a close look at uh, Oscar. And uh, as you guys remember back at the beginning of the video, the chains here also. Nice detail. They're actually actual chains. They're not sculpted into the figure. Same with uh, this little chain here near his belt. Very awesome. Very nice. Um, okay, I think uh, that's all I can say about the sculpt and the paint. Uh, again, you know, this is what we can expect from Gecko. They they really put out high quality figures. Um, any franchise that they get their hands on, uh, they've done a Berserk, uh, a, you know, a take on Guts in the past. I couldn't get that. I really regret that. I wish I had that Guts by Gecko. Uh, there is one Guts coming out by First Four Figures soon. Um, but I really wanted that uh, Guts by Gecko because uh, look at these figures. They really know how to do PVC. So if you're looking for any PVC figures out there, great examples of them, Gecko is a company to go to. Um, I guess while we talk about that, we can bring in Sigma of Katarina into the mix. You guys can see that um, they look great together. I, they, they're definitely to scale. Uh, they look awesome together, so I think I can display them like so together. Even the uh, hunter in the background looks great. Let's bring them into the mix. I have a little chat there, a little conversation. So, great looking figures all together. Uh, let's bring the hunter closer there so we... I don't want to scratch anything, I don't want them rubbing against each other, but there we go. All three figures. Uh, these are my Gecko figures so far in the Soulsborne universe. Um, I did mention in the video that Oscar was the second, but actually he is not. He is the third, you can say. Uh, they, they did release a, um, a different figure from uh, Dark Souls 3, uh, the Lord of Cinder figure. Uh, so there is a Lord of Cinder statue out there by Gecko, and I believe that one is also uh, polystone resin. It, it is not a PVC. And uh, so, it's just a reminder, this one here, the Sigmire, is a resin figure, it's a polystone resin, so he is very heavy. He's heavy because he's a solid resin, whereas the Hunter from Bloodborne it's PVC, and so is Oscar here. But uh, again, I don't mind PVC because at the end of the day, you guys get this. Very, very good, awesome figures. Uh, so I think that's it for my review and first impressions of um, Knight of Astora Oscar by Gecko. Really fantastic figure. 
um, if you have the chance, if you're a big Dark Souls fan and you have uh, the opportunity to get this guy, I would say do it. Uh, you will not regret it. He looks fantastic. Uh, looks really great. So uh, even with a little crystal lizard there on the floor. So there you guys go. Uh, I think I've covered everything. If I missed anything, please feel free to ask me in the uh, comment section below and I will try to answer all uh, the questions as best I can. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this unboxing video. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. That helps a lot if you guys did enjoy it. And that way I can keep making these unboxing videos that I do enjoy making a lot. And uh, I love hearing you guys, uh, you guys' feedback and your questions and whatnot. So again, feel free to post any questions in the comment section below. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it for this unboxing video. I'll see you guys on the next one.